Signs why you must fast and pray and never be weary. Hello great people, it's good to have you back to Emmy Narrate channel. In today's video, I will be showing you signs why you must fast and pray and never be weary. You must have encountered videos on fasting and prayers. But you know the scripture in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Many a times we go through things in life, or have experiences we do not understand. It seems to be normal. People encourage you to carry on, to move on, not to think about it. Some people will tell you to just be, that what will be, will be. Some people may tell you, it was meant to be. But as a Christian, you must be intentional about your life and destiny, and what you allow in your spiritual aura. The thing is, most of these situations or happenings are from the devil, they don't just happen naturally. They are in your life, they happen to weaken you and make you not fulfill your purpose on earth. Most of the problems in life are satanic manipulations, it can pass through anyone as an instrument to get to you. At times, when it seems all hope is lost, in times when all the voices around you screams evil, setbacks, disappointments, near success syndrome, victimization, oppression, oppositions, spiritual and physical attack, what do you do? Do you fold your arms and wallow in self-pity? Do you remember to fast and pray? In Mark 9 28-29, it says, And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. Jesus knew that there are strongholds, tough situations that only the flesh can't solve. When we fast and pray, we kill the flesh and be in the spirit, with humility communing with God. Jesus commanded us to fast and pray. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Isaiah 58, 6-7. This story is inspired by true life events. Kindly watch this video to the end. Good morning Mr. Emmanuel. Morning Madam. Please sir, I wanted to tell you that I have written my confirmation letter. I wish you to minute it, so I can submit it to the director. Eh. You wish your appointment to be confirmed right? Yes sir. And what have you been doing here that you wish your appointment to be confirmed? You don't clean and arrange my table. You can't stand in for me properly. You are lazy. You know what? This job you are doing you didn't deserve it. I don't just know what happened that the director found you qualified. This job was meant for another person. The day you came for an interview, you didn't do any better than other candidates. But the director just picked interest in you. She said, you were smiling all through the interview session, even when you couldn't answer the questions correctly. She said you were comported and confident even when you were explaining things out of point. She just admired your composure and charisma. That was how you got this job in the first place. Oh wow, I didn't know about that. I just knew R of 10 people that wrote the interview examination. It was three of us that was called for the oral interview, and I happened to be the only one that was taken. I didn't know the details. But sir, I have been doing my job well. I have been executing my duties well. How come you said I haven't been working well? cleaning and arranging your table. My job has a specification. I adhere to all my job requirements. Clearing and arranging your table is not one of them, but, I do arrange it sometimes, but standing in for you depends on the pre-informed information. I always do that for you, there's no day you ask me to stand in for you that I refused. How come you don't remember any of it, sir? See, listen, I am your superior here. Anyway, let me not say anything. Let the letter be there, I shall minute it. We shall see how it goes. It's alright sir, but I don't understand, you don't want to minute it. I said, I will minute it. Let it be there. Good morning Madam Modesta, good morning Madam Agnes. What is wrong that you have not submitted your confirmation letter since so you can be approved with others? Hum, my sister, I wrote the letter since a week ago. Mr. Emmanuel who is supposed to minute to the director refused to minute the letter. 
He has been playing hanky panky games with me. Yesterday, I asked him if he has minute it, he said he will. That is what he has been telling me for two weeks now. I submitted the letter to him like two weeks ago, it's a week now he promised to finally look into the letter, till now nothing. Ah, that's a foul play, you know what, just go and bring the letter and submit it to me. I'll forward it to the director, the director will be the one to give him herself. He will not flaunt her orders. Try and submit today so she can give him today as well, plus or minus, it should be ready by next week. Okay A, eh? thank you for much for your concern and help. I appreciate. What are colleagues for? You know if you don't get confirmed on time, the money for the months past will never be paid to you again. So, you have to get confirmed on time if you still wish to continue working here. It's not good, it's not good, but it helps. With this economy downturn, the money added after confirmation of appointment can cover your transportation and other small small things. So, hurry, I will, thank you. Modesta went and carried her confirmation letter from Mr. Emanuel's drawer, he handed it to Agnes, the director's secretary, who submitted it to the director. The following day. Modesta, what is this nonsense you just did? What did I tell you? Good morning sir, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. Oh spare me the sentiment. I'm not interested in your greetings. What is good about this morning? Where is the letter you kept on my desk? Oh, I removed it and submitted to the director through her secretary. I learned, she'll be the one to ask you to minutes my letter for approval. You see this nonsense you just did? You see this stunt you just pulled? Were you trying to report me that I can't do my job effectively? Look, let me tell you something you don't know. You work under me. You are my subordinate. I have power and authority in this place in this company as a whole. If I say, you shouldn't be confirmed. That's what will happen, anything I say in this company stands. You mischievously came and carried the letter, did you think you can be approved or confirmed with me? I am like a god to you here. Anything I wish stands. In fact, I didn't even want you to be employed. I had someone in it that needed this job more. So, that letter shall remain in my drawer until my spirit is calmed, till I decide when I should minute it. I'm sorry about that sir. It was never to spite you. I was told, the director will be the one to ask for your minutes. It was not to hurt or step on you. I'm sorry about that. You can go please. When I'm calmed, I'll know when to minute it. Later. Thank you sir. For a month plus, Emmanuel refused to minute the letter. Meanwhile, Mummy, good evening. How was work today? Good evening my dear, work was alright. How is your sister? She has been sleeping since I came back, hope she is feeling fine. Yes mummy, she is very well. School was great today. We ate our lunch, all, we didn't bring back anything. That's good, you know, you should be observing your siesta as well, with your sister. I don't feel like sleeping mummy. Then, you should be studying. No mummy, I don't feel like sleeping or studying. I just want to rest, relax without doing anything. Hum, probably, watching a TV program right? Yes mummy, please, it's time for, the air on Z world. I'll watch it so I can explain it to Priscilla later. Hum, Dawson, I will just allow you today, I was so stressed at work today, I don't have the energy for you today please. Thank you, mummy. Later that night. Chai, what a relief. I'm glad I defecated well. I'm alive. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What kind of dream was that? Why was I defecating in my dream? That is not a good dream at all. Defecating in the dream always means someone will die. God please, let such fate not come to pass. I reject it nobody will die in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Emmanuel. Please, how may I help you? Please, ma'am, it's about Modesta. She should be sacked. She is very lazy. She doesn't know how to execute her duties well. She is always pressing her phone without working. 
I don't think she deserves to continue working here ma'am. As someone who is her superior and who wants the good, growth and progress of this company. I wish to say, she needs to be sacked, and we can employ someone competent and effective, ma'am. No problem Mr. Emmanuel, I have heard your message. Kindly put into writing for the meantime, ask her to transfer to the head of service office. I will like the head of service to monitor her there and if she is still defiant like you said, I'll definitely fire her. Thank you ma'am. Yippee. I told her, I have a say in this company. That whatever I say, as one of the most important, reverend personnel in this company, that that's what will happen. She thought I was joking. Let's see how it goes for her. Nonsense. Eh. Madam Modesta, the director called me this afternoon to tell you to move to the head of service office. You are no longer working under me. I will just minute your letter today and submit while you will move over there. Wow, what happened? What did I do wrong? I don't know, oh, she just called to inform me of swap in office. So, you will do as she said? It's alright, I will go, I know you don't like me from the beginning. I don't mind leaving here, I want to believe it's for the better. I shall be fine, thank you for wanting to minute my letter. I'm grateful. Modesta moved from Emmanuel's office to the head of service office. She was sad Emmanuel has been victimizing her, humiliating her and lying against her, but she was happy she will have to work in a new office space void of Emmanuel's toxicity. Modesta, I'm happy to see you here. Thank God. The director said, I told ask you to make lists of things, activities and duties you do every day and submit it to me submit to her. Please treat it as urgent. Hmm, it is well, Mr. Emmanuel, I am no longer working under you. You have a new person assigned to you. Why would the director ask you to tell me to make a list of activities I do in a day to you instead of the person working under you now? Why not from my new superior? I don't seem to understand you. Why do you pick on me so much? Always plotting for my downfall. Why? Because you always act too smart always interested in knowing my job specification. You think I would fold my arms and watch you have my duties? So that if anything happens to me, they'll ask you to replace me? Never. You can't be a threat to me in this company, so, if you love your job, do as I say, else, I'll just go and report to the director that you are defiant, flaunting orders and you don't want to do what you are told to. Thank you. Wow. Modesta kept having attacks at her workplace, directly and indirectly. Modesta, sorry to bother you, what exactly did you do to Mr. Emmanuel? My sister, nothing, hmm, I didn't want to tell you this, do you know he came to the director's office and asked for you to be sacked? Are you serious? Yes, hmm, he is well delayed minuting my confirmation letter, making two months to pass without me being confirmed and my salary added. I noticed so too, I haven't done him any wrong as far as I can tell. I have searched myself if there's anything I did against him and found none. My God shall vindicate me. If I were you, I will fast and pray over it. I don't think it's normal for someone to just hate another person so bitterly without a cause. You need to pray seriously. My dear, I'm just tired. I don't have the energy to fast and pray over inconsequential thing. I don't have to waste my prayers or deny my meals for someone. They have not borne him well to try to victimize me more. Emmanuel kept victimizing Modesta, until Modesta heard over a rumor of plans to sack her. Modesta decided to visit a prophet. Yes Lord, yes Lord. Sister Modesta, I want to tell you to be very prayerful. I see your son dying. Pray over your son. I will give you soap to use with a special one to bath your son to destroy the spirit of death in his life. Do that fast. Yes sir, I will do that tonight. Madam Modesta went back home and bathed the son with special soap and water from her prophet. Three days later. Mummy, I'm scared. I'm cold inside but sweating outside. My head, my nose, my stomach. I'm sorry darling, the doctor said you will be fine, she will soon attend to us. You will be fine. Madame Modesta was on and off the hospital fighting for her daughter's survival. It was rather the daughter that was sick but the prophet kept saying things about the son. Good evening pastor. 
bless you, Sister Modesta. I hope your son is doing well now. How is he doing? Pastor, I don't understand. My son is doing well. He is perfect in health, it's my daughter that has been sick. I'm confused sir, how can the spirit keep seeing my son as being unhealthy or to be attacked, dead when it's my daughter that is actually going through serious health challenge? It's not clear sir. I told you to use the remaining water and soap and bath your daughter in case the enemies try it on your son and don't succeed and they get your daughter. Did you not do as I said? I didn't hear that part sir. It's alright, I will bath my daughter with the water. Please do, obedience is better than sacrifice. The Lord be with you. Thank you sir, I should be on my way. God bless you sir. Modesta left Prophet's office being more confused. She did everything the Prophet said, but her family was still under siege. She made up her mind to fast and pray and seek God's mercy. She decided to fast for three days and nights without food or drink, switching off all her gadgets, and kept her herself in utter seclusion. It was a tough spiritual exercise she embarked on as someone who doesn't joke with food. Father, you are greater than the greatest, higher than the highest, stronger than the strongest, Lord I worship you. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, Father, you have never changed. Praising the Lord, from whom all blessings flow, from whom all blessings flow, from whom all blessings flow, praising the Lord, from whom all blessings flow, praise him forevermore. Dear Lord, I plead for mercy, forgive my trespasses and shortcomings and show me mercy in Jesus' name, Amen. Heavenly Father, I praise and magnify your name for your mercies and goodness upon me and my family. If it has not been you O Lord, we would have been given for a prey to the enemy. Thank you for all the challenges I'm facing because I know nothing pass you. Nothing is too hard for you, with you all things are possible so does your word say. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I disorganize every attack from the pit of hell targeted against me and family, every recurring evil and attacks against my life, be destroyed from the root in Jesus' name, Amen. Father, release your Father to destroy every form of evil, setbacks, disappointments, near success, and attacks from any source, every attacks through sickness be consumed by fire in Jesus' name, Amen. This day I break from from disappointments in Jesus' name, Amen. Father, prepare destroyers to destroy those who have vowed to destroy me according to your word in Jeremiah 22, 7 in Jesus' name, Amen. Those planning to destroy my children and my career, those planning to make my life bitter and sorrowful. I return the arrows back to the sender in Jesus' name, Amen. Father, by your power in the name of Jesus Christ, I arrest and bind every personalities and principalities behind recycled afflictions assigned against me, my career, my husband, my children in Jesus' name, Amen. I decree storm of death, satanic storm meant to terminate me and my household, be still in Jesus' name, Amen. Storms of failure, setbacks, near success syndrome, victimization, oppression, oppositions from my place of work, my husband's business, my children health and our general well-being, cease now by fire in Jesus' name, Amen. You door of oppression at my workplace opened against me backfire in Jesus' name, Amen. O oh God arise in your power and let the destructive plans of my enemies against my job, my children backfire now in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you Lord for answering my prayers in Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Modesta continued fasting and praying fervently. She didn't allow anything to distract her. Her cell phone was off. She locked herself in and prayed unto God without eating or drinking for three days and nights. Good morning ma'am. Good morning, Emmanuel. You sent for me, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Emmanuel. You have been warned severally, queried, and warned not to be drinking and getting intoxicated during working hours. You have failed to comply with the rules and regulations of this company, thereby, portraying this company on a wrong way. Many people have complained about your drunkenness and how disorganized and disoriented you are always, misbehaving whenever you are drunk. As such, we have decided to suspend you for the period of a month without a pay with effect from today. Kindly get your suspension letter from the secretary's table. If after the suspension, there's no change in your attitude, 
We shall take a further disciplinary action. Thank you. But ma'am, that is my personal life. During work hours. It's okay. It's okay. No problem, no problem at all. Since, you decided to victimize me, that is it. You may excuse me, Emmanuel. Emmanuel put in a resignation same day, immediately he got his suspension letter. Everyone was amazed as Emmanuel was the darling of the company, with his excesses always overlooked. Thank you for watching. There are times that even prophecy fails. Are you facing challenges, attacks, setbacks, disappointments, near success, failure? No matter what you may be going through, that moment when it hurts so bad, when your back is against the world and it seems that is over is the moment you need to fast and pray, and every mountain shall be moved into the yonder place. That moment you feel tired and irritated and withdrawn from life because of constant disappointments is when you need to fast and pray. When you pray, study the word of God, free yourself from distractions and pray, if you fast and not pray, it makes it hunger strike.